All right, then the second talk um, is titled Crystals to Lithium, a lattice-based digital signature scheme. So this is one of the submissions to the NIST post-quantum call for proposals. Um, it's by Leo Duca, Eike Kielts, Tancred Lepoint, Vadim Lubashevsky, Peter Schwabe, Gregor Seiler, and Damian Stele, and Gregor will give the talk. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. And yeah, so um, Dilithium is um, the signature scheme of um, the crystals package. And to give you some overview, so um, we have submitted uh, the scheme, as was already mentioned, um, to the uh, NIST PQC standardization process. And as such, um, it is actually one out of five uh, lattice based signatures which were submitted to the first round. Um, and uh, one of the most important features of Dilithium is that it's actually quite short, so both uh, with regard to uh, uh, public keys and to signatures. So public keys are about 1.5 kilobytes large and uh, signatures uh, 2.7 kilobytes. And uh, so the scheme falls in um, the family of schemes which uh, use uh, the Fiat Jamir with the balls technique. So this was invented by Lubashevsky in 2009. Um, and on top of this, um, the scheme also includes an important um, improvement which was uh, developed in a series of papers in 2012 and 14, where you basically only send half of the data in the, in the signature and therefore get a signature compression which makes signatures 50% smaller. And um, from this, uh, there are a couple of new things in Dilithium. So the most important is that Dilithium now also has um, public key compression. So compared to earlier schemes, um, the public keys are about 60% smaller with a small cost on side of the signatures. So they grow by about 100 bytes because of this. Um, then, which is also new in Dilithium, is that uh, the hardness is not based either on ring LWE and CIS or on plain LWE and CIS, but on something which basically interpolates between the two and which is called module LWE. And uh, yeah, third, uh, we have produced a very efficient implementation of the scheme and I'm going to talk about this later. So what were the main design goals when designing the lithium? So first, um, the scheme is supposed to be really easy to implement, and for this reason, there's no Gaussian sampling whatsoever. Um, so the reason is that we think that it's very difficult to get Gaussian sampling correct, and even more difficult to implement it in constant time, and therefore we uh, completely omitted this. Um, then, so the second goal was to really get the total size of public keys plus signatures, uh, small, and if you take this as your as your metric, then Dilithium really is one of the one of the shortest uh, signatures in the in the first round of the NIST process. So there's really actually only one signature which is uh, considerably smaller, and this is Falcon, um, which uses Gaussian sampling. Um, then parameters are chosen very conservatively so that uh, there's uh, headroom for uh, future crypto analytic. Um, developments, and um, also Dilithium features a somewhat modular design, which comes mainly from the use of this module LWE assumption. So um, to explain this a bit, in module LWE, uh, different to ring LWE, the, the secret of a module LWE sample is a, is a whole vector over the polynomial ring, and you can easily adjust uh, the security by choosing the, the length of this vector, but the underlying ring always stays the same. And this means for all security levels, and possibly even for, for future somehow adaptations of the security parameters, you will always stay over the same ring, and the arithmetic in this ring you only need to implement once. Um, so you, you can really optimize this, and then you're done with this uh, for all times, basically. Um, so how does one choose uh, this ring? Yeah, so the, the idea is basically to choose, to choose the smallest ring that gives you all the advantages of ring LWE. And in the size, or in the case of, um, of signature schemes, or in the case of Fiat Jamir signatures, what you need is that there's a large uh, set of small polynomials, the so-called challenge polynomials. And if your dimension is 256, then you have this. So this is what we did. Uh, so we choose a 256-dimensional um, cyclotomic ring, and then to make the choice complete, you need to d 
decide on a modulus Q, and because we want to have uh, entity-based uh, multiplication, we, the, the, the modulus is entity-friendly. So, and it is in the order of 2 to the 23. So this is the ring we use, and with this introduction, I can now give a very short um, idea how the scheme works. So this is um, basically a simplified version. So actually, this is a, the, the Bell Galbraith scheme from 2014, which differs to Dilithium mainly in that there is no public key compression. And yeah, so how does this work? Um, for key generation, uh, you essentially just uh, sample an LWE sample. So you, you, you pick a matrix A and then two short vectors, S1 and S2, and compute A as 1 plus S2. Uh, so T is some LWE vector, then you put A and T into your public key, and with this, uh, and yeah, signing works uh, as follows. So signing basically is a fiat Shamir transform of a Sigma, Sigma protocol. So what you do is you pick a short vector Y, compute A Y, and then put this into a hash function to get the challenge polynomial C. But because we have uh, signature compression, uh, you only take the high bits of W. This is what high of W is supposed to mean. Um, and with this C that you get, you compute Y plus uh, CS1. And then there's the important rejection sampling step where you need to reject if um, either uh, the Z vector you got or W minus CS2 would reveal secret information. And the second uh, rejection step is also needed for correctness because in verification, what you want to do is basically recompute this uh, challenge polynomial. So what you would need is um, the high part of W, but what you already have, uh, only have, is something which is equivalent to W minus CS2. Um, um, but because of this uh, second rejection condition, the high part of W minus CS2 is actually equal to the high part of W. So this is correct. And now I can explain how the new public uh, key compression works on top of this. So basically the idea is that um, you don't put the whole MWE vector T into your public key, but you also decompose this in the high and the low part, T1 and T0, and only put uh, T1 into the public key. And then the question is, how can you still verify signatures if you only have T1? And for this, uh, remember that you need to compute the high part of AZ minus CT, but now you only have uh, T1, so you can only compute AZ minus CT1 times 2 to the 14. Um, so to, to, to overcome this problem, the idea is basically to add carries from the addition of this additional minus CT0 into the signature so that um, in the verification you can correct um, the term so that you get the correct uh, I part of the vector that you need. So this is basically the idea. Now, security-wise, um, there is a tight reduction, um, even in the quantum random oracle model, to module LW and CIS and a new assumption, which is called um, self-target MSIS. And self-target MSIS is basically a convolution of, of MSIS and a hash function. And this is also the reason why we think it's secure. So um, since the hash function doesn't share any algebraic property with, with MSIS, it seems uh, unlikely that you can solve this more e easily than solving some MSIS problem. But if you don't believe this, then there's actually, you can actually go all the way to, to, to module SIS, but um, only in the classical random oracle model and with a standard forking time lemma argument. OK, so with this, I want to go to the, uh, or turn to the implementation now. So we have produced two implementations, uh, one reference implementation in plain C and one AVX2 optimized implementation. You can find both of them on our GitHub uh, repository. And so in general, the main um, operations which are most important uh, for, for, the, for the speed of the final scheme are polynomial multiplication in the ring, and I will say more about this later, and secondly, uh, expansion of, of uh, the shake uh, XOF. And shake is used everywhere to, in the scheme to, to sample polynomials to also expand this matrix which appears in M LWE and so on. And we actually designed uh, the use of shake in a way that in, if you need to sample a vector of polynomials, then every polynomial is sampled with a fresh input to shake. So this is very easily parallelizable and uh, we also do this in our AVX optimized implementation, but I also come to this later. Um, our implementations are constant time. So 
they, they are protected against uh, timing side channel attacks. In, for example, we never use uh, the C operator to compute any modular reductions or something like this. Um, maybe as a, as, a, as, a, as a note here, uh, constant time for uh, fiat Jamir signatures with rejection sampling, this is a bit subtle. And uh, uh, as one example, so for example, the sampling of the challenge polynomials in our implementation is not constant time, although you might at first uh, think it does, it needs to be. So w what you can com get from the implementation is you can, for example, compute um, challenges even for iterations of the rejection sampling uh, loop which uh, don't end up or which, which would reveal secret information, but in case of the challenges, um, there's this hash, hash function in between. So what you only get is an output of a hash function and there's enough entropy, so um, this, is, this is actually safe. Um, yeah, so with this, uh, yeah, I want to show you the, the speed of our reference implementation. So all these numbers are cycle counts on a Skylake processor, and I invite you to look at uh, the signing columns, and there you see that really multiplication and the use of shake uh, make up for by far the most time. And this is why I want to say something about NTT multiplication now. So I said in the beginning that we picked our ring to be NTT friendly, and I want to argue now that, that for at least for Fiat uh, Shamir uh, signatures, uh, which are based on module LWE, this is the right choice. And the reason is not so much that NTT multiplication is fast, but that it's very easy to, to save a lot of NTTs. And uh, to, to explain this, so if you count multiplications in Dilithium, then you find that to sign a message on average, you need to do about 224 polynomial multiplications. So if you would do this naively with NTTs, which means you do three NTTs per multiplication, then you end up doing 673 NTTs. So this is just 224 times three. But as I said, you can save a lot of them. And the, the most important uh, saving comes from directly sampling the matrix A, which appears in MLWE in the NTT domain representation, but there are other, other possible savings because in the, in the loop over the rejection sampling, there are certain polynomials that you need to multiply with which stay constant, so you can transform them outside of the loop, and in the end, it turns out that we only do 172 entities. So this means uh, you immediately, very easily, get a four times speed up over Karatsuba multiplication from this. Um, and uh, I want to note here that although we have this uh, speed up also in the reference implementation, entities still make up for the most time-consuming operation. So this is really um, something which ends up to be important in, in practice. Um, okay, with this, uh, I come to the AVX2 optimized implementation. So this differs in four ways from our reference implementation. So first, we have a very fast vectorized entity in assembly language, and I will talk about this a bit later. Um, also, we use a four-way parallel shake for the expansion of the, of the, of the metrics in MLWE and for sampling uh, polynomial vectors. And then there are two new things, which actually are from last week, basically. So, um, in the, uh, so the, the, the public key and signature compression is now done somewhat more cleverly, and we also have a fast uh, assembly modular reduction now. And with these um, four improvements, our AVX2 version is about uh, 3.5 times faster um, for signing messages. And uh, as I said, uh, this recent update is really important, so the, it is also now faster about, by about 40% than, than the numbers we have announced in the chess paper. Um, so, yeah, then let me somehow come to an end with this talk to talk uh, or, yeah, a bit uh, about NTT, our, yeah, our NTT implementation. So, um, the, the basically, the, the prior state of the art before Dilithium for fast NTTs, which are used in lattice cryptography, they, they were based on floating point arithmetic. So, for example, the New Hope entity is using floating point arithmetic, and what is new in Dilithium is that uh, we have uh, 
uh, come up with a really fast approach that uses integer arithmetic, and then the question is how do you um, how do you do uh, modular reductions, and uh, it actually does the same uh, Montgomery reduction strategy as as uh, the reference implementation. Um, there's there's a small uh, caveat to this. So unfortunately, our uh, the lithium entity is not as as fast as uh, the Kaiba entity. Um, so uh, Kaiba uses a prime which is on a modulus Q which is below 16 bits. So you expect a factor of two speed up um, when using uh, these uh, small, smaller integers because you can pack your vectors uh, with uh, double the, the number of, of integers. But there's another factor of two. Um, uh, speed up in, in Kaiba on top of this. So Ka the Kaiba entity is about four times faster than the Dilithium entity. And the reason why we cannot use the same tricks in Dilithium is because there is no um, instruction to only compute the high part of 32-bit uh, integers in the inter instruction set. So here you see the numbers. But yeah, so our, and uh, from them you see that our uh, the lithium uh, entity ends up to be about two times faster still uh, compared to the floating point approach before. And I've also listed as a last column the, the multiplication implementation of Sabre because this is also a 256 um, dimensional ring that they use, but they don't really use uh, 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 entity friendly uh, prime, so they need to resort to uh, Tom Cook um, multiplication. And you see that, yeah, um, if you compare this to Kaiba, which is also 16 bit, that uh, we are still much faster with entity based multiplication. Yeah, and so it's basically the last uh, thing in the talk. These are the performance numbers of our AVX2 implement uh, of our AVX2 optimized implementation, and you see that uh, for signing um, we are down to 510 uh, cycles in the median, or 635,000 on average, which we think is is very competitive. And yeah, with this I want to end my presentation. Maybe maybe one more thing. Um, the yeah, so although th there's a very fast multiplication and shake implementation now, this is somehow still the, the most uh, time-consuming operation, but not with, a, with, this much, with this much somehow gap to the rest. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. Any questions for Gregor? All right, maybe I can ask a question then. So you said shake is one song besides multiplication, one of the, the most time consuming operations. Did you consider maybe using something else than shake? Yes, uh, we did. Um, so we ended up using shake because it's one of the NIST approved, uh, well, it is a NIST approved scheme and it's also easy to, to get uh, implemented in constant time. Um, but yeah, so this, the, the, this is not crucial for the for the uh, for the scheme itself. So you could you could easily exchange uh, Shake against something else, which is faster on your platform, and then you get to uh, yeah, you might get some speed up. Yeah. But and the current four-way SIMD AVX implementation. So these are really nice results. How would that carry over to, for instance, if you do Neon on ARM? Can we expect similar? I, performance results? So you mean for Shake or for the scheme in general? For the scheme in general. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, the, the, the same vectorization things you can do on every. Yeah, so there's no reason why this is only, should only be possible with AVX2. Yeah. All right, so this, do, this numbers, you expect similar results? Uh, I'm not an expert in this, so I don't know, but. Um, but the implementation uh, yeah. strategy would, in general. I guess so, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, then let's thank Gregor again. <laughs>